Okay, so this is a short video because someone was confused on the use of the Ignis Extruder. Uh, this is the Ignis Extruder here, simple GUI, and the liquids go in on either side. I think it's lava and then water, or the other way around. I forget which. Either way, um, the Ignis Extruder is quite simple to use. You have two tabs here, redstone control, so you can ignore redstone signals, deactivate it uh, when there's a hot, when there's a torch underneath it or deactivate it when there's no torch underneath it or no signal. There's another tab as well for configurations of things going in and out like this orange area here will go to the top and that's top, left, bottom, right and back is on the corner here. Now obviously you know the blue areas the liquid will be inputs for the liquids They'll, they're relative to this and the orange is the output. Typically orange, red and yellow are outputs and blues and greens and purples tend to be inputs uh, those are the colours I know of. Anyway, for the Ignis Extruder in particular, you put in lava, you put in <laughs> water, sorry. Um, put You put in lava, you put in water, um, or the other way around. God knows, I'll do it in a second. And it'll make either cobblestone, stone, or obsidian, depending on what you click. Uh, cobblestone doesn't cost anything. You put in, you put in lava, you put in water, and uh, I'll give, it, give you an example. Uh, bucket. Say one lava bucket, one water bucket. There's each. One lava bucket, one water bucket. Ignore the redstone signal so it actually activates and it just starts making cobblestone. That's great. Now, let's take that to high again. Take cobblestone out. And say switch it to the stone. Now activate it again. Goes a little bit slower, makes it direct and consumes a bucket of water and no lava. Uh, if I just turn this off again and put in another bucket of water and change it to obsidian, reactivate. Keep going, on, go on. Consumes both a bucket of water and a bucket of lava. So that's how things go. Cobblestone is free, but you need some water and some lava to start it. Stone just consumes a bucket of water and obsidian consumes a bucket of water and lava. Frankly, just produce cobblestone, you can churn off, the, you can do the stone direct. Uh, you can make the stone directly through water, if you really want. It does save you some energy, because you don't have to process the cobblestone in redstone furnace, but I personally would just make the cobblestone straight out, because cause, uh, you could probably use the cobblestone in more things, and you could just make the stone in cobblestone into stone as you wish. Generally, with the levels of energy you'll finally be playing with, it will not make a difference. That's how to use it. As for how to pipe things in and out, well, that's just relative to these sides here. Um, you want to pump, say, uh, let's get a lava fabricator. Oh, nope, lava fabricator. And uh, an aqueous accumulator, just to use machines that are from the same mod. Uh, well, the lava fabricator is uh, my factory reloaded. There's not really a... <laughs> Bear in mind these will look differently to some people because different texture pack. So, uh, what we need to do is we need to get fluiducts. I'm going to use um, kind of opaque, uh, translucent, sorry, transparent um, liquid uh, fluiducts just so you can see things moving, like so. Uh, this one does accumulate very little over time, but uh, let's speed things up. I don't know. Let's make that. Put a couple of buckets of water in, and this thing should start picking up water like crazy. And it'll fill this up from here, and you'll have to put in your own energy, but I'm just going to, uh, for the purposes of this, stick a creative energy cell there just so it can create infinite. That creates lava, that all fills up nicely, switches to obsidian, and there you go. Now, if you figure out some kind of, uh, if you use a lava fabricator and you have unlimited power, then sorted, you've got unlimited obsidian over time. So this will create obsidian. This will use both. That's how things work. The blue sides accept liquids. To pump it out again, say you've got a deep storage unit you want to put this all into. Um, let's put it here. Get some item ducts. Uh, again, uh, ones you can see into. Like so. And fortunately, you've, it's not just going to pump itself out of its own accord. Or is it? Hang on, I need to check. Yeah, no, it's not just going to pump out of its own accord. Because it's an out port, I think. I'll just throw these around randomly. 
Just doing that will be enough. Yeah, there we go. Just whacking with the sledgehammer will be enough, but you can actively pull it out if you get a servo motor or just put a redstone signal next to it. Um, this is a whole other GUI. Put that to low, for instance, and that'll, that'll actively pull out the uh, obsidian rather than doing what I did before, which was passive output. Use, um, passive is where the machine outputs it. Active is where the item duct pulls it out of its own accord. Either way, this is going into a deep storage unit. Basic infinite setup. Of course, you need to have the power. In this particular case, you can use other lava uh, generation techniques, but that is the basics of the igneous extruder, and you can create massive banks of them. I'll just quickly make a big one. Okay, so this is a quick Ignis Extrude Tower, which is producing cobblestone. And uh, basically what it is, is an item duct to the center with all the kind of uh, ports set to output. And just a tower of Ignis Extrude, it's all producing cobblestone. Now, the pr cobblestone production rate is uh, one every two seconds. So this is 20 here, because that's four times five. And that means it's 10 cobblestone per second which is a fair rate. Um, this is passively pulled out, but it does it every like every other time it makes a, a cobblestone. Wait, why isn't this one going? There we go. Every few times it makes a cobblestone. So, what I did as well is I changed the back output to be the uh, back to be an output. Um, you can do this by, whenever you like left click, uh, it cycles forwards through the ports, so you left click from blank, it goes to blue. You left click from blue, it goes to orange. Left click from orange, it goes back to blank. This thing only has three options of ports. Other things are more complicated and have more colors. I think the um, I think it's the induction furnace has one of the most. Just have a look quickly. Uh, keep accidentally clicking off. Uh, let's see, induction furnace. Okay, so there's green, purple, red, and yellow. But orange applies to this whole area. Um, there's a blue which applies to all this whole area, but then you've got red for this top area, or yellow for this area, purple for this area, or green for this area. So if you want to specify very precisely what you want to pull in, what you want to take out, what you want to send various places, you've got all this lovely stuff. So you've got all this thing you can cycle through. So you've got blue. Note how the colors change as well because of the ports available. So say I blank everything so it doesn't create this confusing mix. Uh, like that. So I got blur. This blank. Same so blue, uh, red, yellow, orange, green, purple, and blank again. <sighs> uh, another thing to note as well is anything that requires energy will accept energy from any side that has a port currently open. So as is, I think it won't take energy. I'm just going to use a conduit rather than direct contact via creative cell just in case because it may change how it works. Oh no, it will make contact. Okay, so even uh, even with no ports open, this thing will still ex uh, accept energy, so you just have to whack that to stop it from doing that. Yeah, like so. So like that, and then it goes back to normal. Okay, so even with all ports closed. So literally just attaching an energy pipe to any side doesn't make a blind bit of difference as long as you attach it. So you can arrange your ports around that. That's something to remember with any machine you make. And hopefully this will mean you can do Ignis Extruders. Um, although I think it will take you some time to beat what some people tend to do, trying to produce lots of cobblestone. Uh, most I had 1,024 Ignis Extruders, which took a long time to build. And yeah, that's 512 cobblestone per second. That's a lot. But some people have built more and higher and are aiming higher than that. Uh, by the time I got to those 1,024 Ignis Extruders, I was had a grand total of 180 million cobblestone. But these deep storage units can hold 2 billion, so which was what I was trying to fill. I was a bit off. 
Still, hope you had fun, and now you know a little bit more about how igneous shooters work, and hopefully thermal expansion machines as a whole. Side note, uh, I will probably do be doing more requests on tutorials on various things. I do have a few in mind, including the new turbines for Attackify, so people can kind of understand what's going on. A lot of helpful kind of sheets and stuff have been made, but I kind of want to explain the, how the reactors work, how the turbines work, and why the particular setup that's been found is the most efficient, uh, as well as how to construct it, what the resources are required, and well, generally quite a lengthy explanation on all of that, but that'll be its own video, and I might make a few videos in preparation for that just to explain, as well as modular power suits as well, and maybe a couple of others I have in mind anyway, but if there's anything in particular you guys really want to see ahead of time, not in that list of things I've just explained, then ask me, message me. Preferably not in game on the forums will be awesome, or just leave a comment on the video. Um, yeah, uh, any, any suggestions would be handy. I can do more, and I will see you guys then, I guess, or in Techify, whichever you want to do. Hopefully, this server won't be crashing a million times a day. Just so you know, that's been happening a lot. Um, but I'm sure it'll be fixed soon. I mean, they are doing quite a lot of big plans and things, so. Anyway, I'm dragging on too long, so I will see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.